Today on Network Africa, the UN Refugee Agency describes 2016 as the deadliest year for refugees and migrants. Al-Shabaab launches three attacks in Somalia and Kenya in just 24 hours. Plus, Nigeria's EFCC says the current anti-graft war will help boost investment in the country. Let's begin Network Africa. Hello everyone, I am Amarachi Ubani. The deadliest year for refugees and migrants, that's how the UN Refugee Agency has described 2016. At a press conference today, spokesperson for the agency, William Spindler, said at least 3,740 lives have been reportedly lost. It says the two most dangerous months for crossings are yet to come, but the UN says that while the number of crossings have decreased considerably, the number of deaths have increased. death toll uh, this year among refugees and migrants uh, with, uh, is already uh, the highest uh, ever recorded. Uh, with two months of 2016 still to go, at least 3,740 lives are reported lost, and uh, we might uh, see this figure rise in the next uh, few uh, days. And that's just short of the 3,771 deaths reported for the whole of 2015. This is by far the worst we have ever seen in the Mediterranean. If you consider that last year there was a million people crossing the Mediterranean and the number of deaths is about the same as this year, uh, when three times uh, less people have crossed, then you could say that uh, the, the death rate has uh, increased threefold. Meanwhile, France has begun dismantling structures at the jungle camp in Calais. Yesterday began forced evacuations to other parts of the country and Europe. About 2,000 migrants, however, did leave voluntarily. Hundreds more have also followed. The jungle has become a key symbol of Europe's migrant crisis, housing some 7,000 residents in squalid conditions. <laughs> Hundreds of migrants once again queued before dawn outside the vast hangar, waiting to be registered and sent to one of the 450 welcome centers across France. Volunteers helped to keep the crowd calm as people stood closely by. More than 2,300 dwellers, and that's more than a third of the total, left the camp outside the northern port by bus on Monday, with French officials celebrating the peaceful start of the operation after sporadic weekend skirmishes. Migrants who made it past the queue chose the region of their welcome center on the map presented to them by an official before receiving a color-coded bracelet and boarding a bus to their destination. An interior ministry spokesman said the demolition operation will start by hand later on Tuesday and that the bulldozers will not roll in immediately in an effort to minimize tensions. Meanwhile, Britain's interior minister told UK lawmakers that the closure of the Calais camp will help secure a future agreement that allows British officials to check passports in France and vice versa. The camp isn't just about our legal and moral obligations. It is also in our national interest. The rise in the number of the people has led some in France to question the Le Touquet agreement. This agreement has helped us better protect our borders and ensured strong trade links between Britain and France. By clearing the camp, we can help secure the future of the juxtaposed controls, as well as playing our part to help those most in need in Calais. Many of the migrants living in Calais are from countries such as Afghanistan, Syria and Eritrea, and had wanted to read Britain which is connected by France by rail tunnel. Some had wished to join up with relatives already there and most had planned to seek work 
believing that jobs are easier to get in the UK than in France. Britain, however, bars most of them on the basis of European Union rules requiring them to seek asylum in the first member states before they set foot in. Back on the continent, 12 people have been killed in an attack in Kenya. Attacks were claimed by Somali-based militants group Al-Shabaab. The target, however, was a guest house hosting members of a theater group who were performing plays in schools in the northeastern town of Mandara. The group, which once ruled much of Somalia, wants to topple the Western-backed government in Mogadishu and drive out African Amazon peacekeepers made of uh, soldiers from Kenya, Djibouti, Uganda, Ethiopia and other African countries. Uh, the attack marks the build-up to elections in coming weeks for uh, the Somali parliament, which we'll be talking about in a minute, uh, which will then pick a new president to continue slow reconstruction efforts in a nation racked by more than two decades of conflict. Well, the overnight attacks in the Kenyan town of Mandara was carried out by al-Shabaab. So authorities would like us to believe, or so the group would like us to believe, according to its northeastern regional security coordinator. But the government is saying that al-Shabaab was not behind the attack. Mandara borders Ethiopia, Somalia, uh, which shares a long and porous border with Kenya. Al-Shabaab has already said he carried out the attack on the guest house, but the regional coordinator for uh, northeast Kenya says the border with Somalia was closed from dawn to dusk and there was no way the attackers could have crossed the border. He added that the preliminary investigations show that the 3 a.m. attack was carried out by radicalized youth criminal gangs operating within Mandara town who used four improvised explosive devices to blow up a section of the hotel. Out to that attack in Somalia. Now, the African Union mission in Somalia has confirmed its base in Beladwain, a strategic town north of the capital of Mogadishu, was indeed hit by a truck bomb this morning. A news website says four AU troops are among those who were killed. Another agency is quoting Al Shabaab spokesman Abdi Sas Abu Musab, saying that 17 soldiers from Djibouti were killed in the attack. Amazon, which has serving troops from Burundi, Djibouti, Ethiopia, Kenya and Uganda, has been helping a UN-backed government in its fight against al-Shabaab, pushing the militants out of most of Somalia's major towns, but they continue to mount deadly suicide bombings and guerrilla attacks.